Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belongeth to my Lord and Saviour, whose name is Yahweh Bahasham, Yahabashai Bahasham, Yahabaisham, Yahabashai Bahasham, Mahavaka Kwadash. And double honour to the elder apostle of great millstone that teaches truth well and that continue to teach his truth well unto the hopeful elect across the globe. Okay. And to the few brothers and sisters listening and learning and teaching this truth wholeheartedly, entirely, not being compromised, not being afraid to speak out against lies. This is what this truth is going to speak. This, this is what this lesson is going to be upon. Okay. The true prophets were not in the spirit of Go along to get along. You know what I mean? You know? What you're going to find out in this truth that is very few men that really have integrity. Very few men that really have integrity. Very, very few that are really going to stand for the words. Let's start at Proverbs. Bear me just a minute. Bear me just a minute. Let's start at Proverbs. 12 and 17 He that speaketh truth Showeth forth righteousness So you holding on to the truth And speaking truth What's that going to manifest? Your righteousness that Yahweh has given to you You're not going to be sugarcoat in anything Okay But a false witness deceit Okay So if you're not speaking the truth You're speaking deceit Okay you can't have it two ways. Oh, I want to teach that, but uh, I don't like that. You know? You know what that means? That means you're not a true prophet. You haven't really... Well, you've been set up. But you've been set up on the left-hand side. The men of the Lord, they were going to speak the truth. That's why Jeremiah, what was he told? Fear them not. I will put my words in thy mouth. Why do you think they wanted to chuck Yahawashai? Off a mountain. Why do you think they wanted to grab him up? Because the words he was speaking. He didn't care about their feelings. Is this to say Yahweh wasn't balanced? Yahweh was very, very, very balanced. But he did not care about people's feelings. Because the moment you start caring about what other people think, that means you've compromised yourself. You can't speak the truth. And that's why it ain't good to be around a whole, a whole heap of people. In, 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 in the world And even in the truth Because certain men that claim to be in the truth When the truth is brought before them Oh no we can't speak about that You know Oh let's divert Damage control But guess what When you do that You put yourself in the lot of a wicked man You put yourself in the lot as a false prophet there's nothing in this Bible that I, I no 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 um nothing in this Bible that I would not um mention because everything needs to be mentioned. You can't eat just some of the roll. Yahweh said, "Eat all the roll," and that's how you can see the sign of a true man of the Lord and who who is not. And it all, go, it all comes down to being compromised. Okay? And the reason why they wanted to, to, to get rid of Yahabashai because he was saying things that were, that were hurting them. Okay? Because when you're in the spirit, you're in the, you're, you're, you're in the spirit of Yahabashim Yahabashai. A lot of the time when we do these videos, we don't even know what we're going to say. Sometimes we write down things, sometimes we don't. And it just so happens that some people get offended. That's why Yahweh says, whoever this, um, whoever this rock falls upon, it shall ground him to powder, paraphrasing. So if you're not right with Yahweh Shah, of course these words are going to ground you to powder. And eventually you're going to be destroyed. That's why you have to read. And that's why the older, even the Apostle um, Taha says that, read the whole Bible. Read. That way you're less less likely to become offended because you know what's in the scriptures than to someone that doesn't really read the scriptures. Then when the scripture comes out, he find himself being offended because you have not read. You don't read. Neither do you understand. And the scriptures say our people speak evil of what they don't understand. Of course, if you don't understand something, you're going to speak evil of it in your own ignorance. 
Let's go to Mark and 8 and 36, Baba Kasha. And that's, that's, that's heavy. You know when the scriptures say, bear me, let me, let me just get it. Bear me just a minute. Bear me just a minute. So much is on my mind, on my mind, on my mind. That's what happens when you're in the truth. A lot's on your mind. Let's go to John 8 and 32. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So knowing the truth, that makes you free. Because the people in this world, they don't know the truth. So they're still in mental shackles. Mental shackles. You could be enslaved. You could be a slave to this world. You could be a slave in your own mind to these religions. But this goes, the depth of the scripture, there's more depth to it. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So you knowing the truth, you're going to be able to speak freely. Without any compromising, you're going to be able to speak freely. But if you have your, if you've took in deals, if you've sold out, if you've took a bag, then guess what? You're not set free. In your mind, you're still captive. Okay? So there's a freeness that comes with teaching this word. That's why a lot of these scriptures that you read, Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's twofold, sometimes it's threefold. There's many layers to these scriptures. And that's why I say, that's why it's good to, to, to be repetitive in this truth. Because the more you go into something, your understanding's supposed to increase. I'm sure if any of you are into weightlifting, examples or boxing, you don't just, all right. The same moves you practice over and over again and once you've mastered them moves you learn something new boxing you're always learning something new always same way in this truth okay so let's go straight to mark 8 and 36 me i'm not compromised over here you know why because nobody nobody has <laughs> i ain't taken ain't Lord willing, I ain't going to do that. Lord willing, ain't took no money. If Esau comes to you or anybody comes to you with some money and say, water down the doctrine. Don't speak about that. Tell them to shove that money where the sun don't shine. You tell them to, to, to beat it. Okay? Nobody should be able to come to you with some money, a briefcase, and say, uh, would you change your doctrine? Would you do this? Because if you do do that, that means you don't have any integrity. You don't have any faith. For you to sell out or to want to be a part of this world, that means you don't have any faith for the things to come. Because a man that has faith, he's not going to compromise himself or the doctrine. He's going to stand on what he believes. You understand? Let's go to Mark 8 and 36. Let's start at 34. And when he had called the people. Let me just a minute. Bear me just a minute. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also. He said unto them. Whosoever will come after me. Let him deny himself. And take up his cross. And follow me. So the moment you hear about this truth. And how shall I cause you in to take up your cross? What's that cross? Your afflictions, your trials. Okay? And follow me. A lot of men, they don't really want to do that. They want to, they, see, 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 they want to be a part of the truth. Get the fame, the popularity. But they don't want to, what I'm realising, they don't want to go through the suffering. They don't want to go through what your house goes went through. They don't want to have to go through that. They want, they want the sweetness, but they don't want the bitterness. And these are men that have been in the truth a short time. And even men that for a long time that should know better. What? What? You think you were coming to this to get famous? Hmm? Because fame is short-lived. You're 15 minutes of fame, but who are you when the cameras are off? Huh? Who are you in your everyday life? Who are you? 
That's what I want to know. Not so much who you are on camera, but who are you in your daily life? Are you actually living these words to the best of your ability? Because no, we're not going to be perfect. But we're supposed to be striving. Who are you? If I was to spend the day with any of the Akiyam, would I see you actually living these words, these words be in you? See, that's something as well with, with repetitiveness. You do it, it becomes you. So the less you're in this truth, the more you're going to be embedded with the world. The less this world's going to be in you, the more this world's going to be in you. Which is corruption, deceit, lies. Because this is what this world pushes. So that's why there's, there, there, there's that difference between those that are in the world and those that are in the world. You cannot serve two masters. Many men still can't make up their mind. Well, guess what? Yahawashai has already done that for some of you already. For whosoever will save his life, well, in verse 35, shall lose it. What's an example of trying to save your life? Selling out, taking a deal. But look what happened to the, all these musicians that are dying off. <laughs> look what happened to them. Black Rob DMX and the other guy, I forgot his name. Do the harm, T harm, do the harm. I forgot his name. The guy, um, Digital Underground, I forgot his name. He dropped it as well. Why did all these individuals sold out? Okay. They pledged allegiance to what this system Satan. Okay. And Satan required their soul. Already it was the Heavenly Father that required their soul. Salakia. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. So you're going to lose it anyway. You sell out. What? What, what, what do you think? You sell out and you're just going to run off into the run, run off into the sunset with um Rothschilds. No. Because when all hell breaks loose, when the RFID chips implemented, if you're an agent, if you've sold out, what do you think your punishment's going to be? Because the elect are going to be protected. Even in death, they're going to overcome. So what do you think your, your, what do you think your end's going to be? It's not going to be a good end. <laughs> okay. That's why the script says, Woe to you that desire the day of the Lord. What is it to you? What is it to you if you sold out? What, if it, what, what is it to you if you've been doing this work deceitfully? What is it to you if you make me brotherly? What is it to you? But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, and part of losing your life is not so much physically, even though you can equate that to this, but what? In the spiritual sense. Losing your life, the people you used to be in contact with, you're no longer hanging around with them. That did not take me too... It didn't take me too long to break away, because Yahweh he cuts off them... People that are not good for you. Okay. So that's part of what? Losing your life for your house shall save. And the gospel saying shall save it. Why? Because now you're, you're, you're going to be renewed. You have a new life now. In your house You saving your life. That means you care about your life. That, that means you, you love the old man. We're trying to be get. We're, tr we're trying to get away from the old man we were. And the only how you can do that is by being in the truth. The less you're in the truth, the more the opportunity the old man has to creep in. It's a day-to-day -day thing. But it's, as long as progress is being made, that's what counts. Okay? Verse 36. For what should it profit a man? And this world, the people of this world, they're all about profit, gain. Profit is gain. If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. And there's many ways you can gain the whole world. So people, they look for the gain of the world. Because they care about the world. So when it says gain the whole world and lose his own soul. That means there's an exchange being done. That means, there's a, that, that, means that you've been compromised. So one to lose his own soul, but he's gained the world. What? The popularity... The likes, speak, people speaking well of you. That's why you've got to read Matthew 23 also. Because it all adds up. When you read these scriptures and you go to Matthew 23, it adds up. Forget that popularity stuff. Take the low seat. Okay? Just take the low seat. Got individuals doing live shows. Yeah, we live, we live. So what? So flipping what? Yeah, you're live. 
But are you alive in your Havashai? Are you alive in this world? Well, you're going to find out most of the majority of individuals in, in this truth, they would, really, they, they would rather have the popularity of the world and they're, sub, they're so shallow, they substitute that just for the Holy Spirit. What does that say about you? It means it means you're you're very shallow. Never came when I first alright when I first came to the truth, I was getting a lot of likes and this and that, and that was getting to my head. But over time, you think no, no, I just want to serve you. How a shame. Forget about all the other stuff. Because that's who we're supposed to be exalting. You how not ourselves. You want to be a celebrity? You should have joined. Um, you should have went on. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. But guess what? You're not a celebrity. You may think you are in your own mind. We're not celebrities. We were put here to suffer. Does this mean, you, all right, certain positions you don't? If you have a good job, you have a good job. Okay, and that's it. But we were put here to suffer. But we're going to what? Lord willing, what they mean? We're going to be crowned in the kingdom. But a lot of men they want that now. This place is, is swiveling down, down, down the drain. And, 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 and you, you, you trying to uh, stop that water from going down the drain. Where's the plug? Where's the plug? Let's stop the dirty water. And so, so that means you're comfortable in this filth. Here it is. The water, uh, it's got all residue, all type of lime scale, all type of things on it. And it's swishing down the drain. Like this society. But you're trying to put the plug in it. Now stop. Maybe we can keep this place alive. That makes you an enemy of your Shai. Because a man can say all day, I want to get out of this place. But you see by this man's actions and how he's uh, moving, he doesn't. You're just a talker. You're not really a dude, you're just a talker. And if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. So in the process, right, you may have fame. You may have the likes of men. But guess what? The Lord hates your guts. That's a horrible thing. The world loves you, but Yahweh Shai hates you. This is why we find favor in Yahweh Shai. And what should a man give in exchange for his soul? So there's a price to pay. And we're giving our soul for Yahweh Shai. That's that fair exchange. Offer your body as a living sacrifice. Whosoever there shall be ashamed of me and my words. A lot of individuals are already ashamed. The scriptures talk about being bold, the righteous as bold as a lion. Therefore, whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words. Okay. Why are you ashamed of, of, of Yahweh Shai and these words? In this adulterous and sinful generation. So the generation we're living in is very adulterous and very sinful generation. And in, in terms of sinful. In the term of speaking a sinful generation. I'm not talking about eating pork. I'm talking about a generation that does not have no faith. A generation that just murmurs. Just think about what Yahweh Shai has done for us. Past, present and he's going to do for us in, in the future. Our people don't think like that. Okay. Of him shall the southern man be ashamed. So if you're ashamed of Yahweh Shai, he's going to be ashamed of you. And why, what, what, why are individuals doing videos in the, in the forest or wherever they may be and they're just looking about scared? Shooken up, they're just looking about, looking around. Why are you in that spirit? Hold on a minute. If you have faith, you're not going to be in that spirit of looking about everywhere. It's because men are in an effed up spirit. They don't really believe. And the scriptures say that fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites and the sinners of Zion. A lot of you didn't think this would happen. The shutdowns or lockdown. A lot of you never really uh, believed this would happen. You were just going through the motions. So you shall be ashamed of Yahushua when he cometh in the glory. When the Son of Man shall be ashamed of you when he cometh in the glory of his Father and the holy angels. That's why we've got to continue, continue fighting. Don't stop, no matter what comes in your way. Okay, the people in the world, they're going to come up against you. The people in the truth that claim to be in the truth, that are false brethren, they're going to come up against you. It's part of your trial. What's it supposed to do? Strengthen us. Not weaken us, strengthen us. But if you're not going through these things, then when something comes your way, of course you're going to feel a particular way. And you're going to fall out. You're going to have that mentality, well, I didn't sign up for this. 
Well, that's why the scriptures say, examine thyself, whether that be in the faith. This is real. This is not a joke. So until the next time, I hope this was edifying. And until the next time, shout out to the hopeful elect. Shout out.